How you doing guys, Eric from TheWasteland.com. And like I probably mentioned in the title, this one is sure to rub some people the wrong way, but those of you who have a solid grasp of reality will see exactly where I'm coming from and see how important these concepts are. But we've seen a lot, you know, we've had tons of crazy stuff happening over the last few years. And one of these ideas that keeps popping up, especially in our side of the internet, is that this idea of like certain things being planned, certain things being done, you know, all the control, controlled opposition, you know, this is the way they want it, whatever. And like I've said before with stuff like aliens or psychics or any of this stuff, the main point you need to realize is that for preparedness purposes specifically, there's nothing wrong with looking into this stuff, trying to figure out what's really going on, obviously, but it doesn't really matter from a preparedness perspective what causes most of these things. You know, sure, if you can build a model that is actually predictive, it can help you get ahead of some of these things. And that's what we can look at, you know, very closely with things like the economic side of it. But when it comes to like why a lot of these geopolitical and even natural disaster type things are happening, this idea that it's all being controlled, it's all being planned, that sort of injects in these people's mind that it's going to happen anyway, that there's nothing you could do about it. And even if they may not be consciously thinking it, it allows you to just be like, well, it's out of my hands. And it's, I think in a lot of ways, it subconsciously stops people from taking action. Like think of just how the way you would deal with the idea of a natural disaster versus, oh, if they think it's being used like a weapon that could just happen at any moment. It's going to completely change the way most people attempt to deal with that. And we're seeing that very, very strongly right now with the fires in Hawaii. And that is, a lot of people are saying like, oh, this is done as a land grab. This is a result of, you know, billionaires trying to take over. This was done on purpose. And I'm not even saying that's not true. My whole point is it doesn't matter if it's true from a preparedness perspective. When you're talking about how you would deal with a fire in your area, specifically, let's say in this case, because that's what's going on, it doesn't matter from your plan whether it was a, da a down power line that just happened to be in a time of high winds, maybe throwing some incompetence by the local fire department. It doesn't matter if that's the cause versus a Jewish space laser or a directed energy weapon done as a land grab so that Mark Zuckerberg can build five new mansions or the Black Rock can buy up everything and squeeze out the normal people. When the flames are at your house, it doesn't matter what caused the fire. Your job is to find out a ways that you can deal with these things and prepare for them when they happen. And like I said, there's some situations where the circumstances would be different if the causes are different. But in most of these situations, the type of stuff I'm talking about, it really doesn't matter. And the most kind of damning or infuriating thing about the whole situation is the people who are usually loudestly, loudestly, most loud or most vocal about saying, you know, wake up, this is the reality of it. They're the least prepared. And I, like I said, I think this goes back to the brain's kind of willingness to grab onto this, these ideas of it being controlled or it being planned is sort of just a way to relieve the burden of having to figure out what's going on or how a way to prepare for it yourself because you're saying, oh, well, I'm just a little pee on pawn who's being you know, battered about by the whims of the global elite when it's all planned. The lizard people are just controlling everything. One, of, Both of these po politicians are controlled opposition, so I, it doesn't matter what I do, and that way you don't have to make any decisions, worry about making the wrong decision. And even if people aren't doing this consciously, I think subconsciously it's a way to relieve themselves of that responsibility. Because when I look around, I see these people that are most like I said, most vocal about waking up. I'm like, no, you're the one who needs to wake up because can you even do a single pull up? Can you run a mile without stopping? Do you have six months of food, even one month of food on hand? Do you have some antibiotics and medical stuff if the stuff gets disrupted? Do you have an ability to cook or provide any sort of light or power if the grid goes down? Do you have fuel for your car in the event of any kind of disruption? Do you have six months worth of expenses? Like you don't need the lizard people trying to take over the world for you to have to, you know, have some other source of income other than your job. Can you accurately shoot a target from even like 10 yards away with your weapon or deal with some kind of, you know, malfunction in, in a real world situation? These are all things that, that have nothing to do with why the problem, whether it's a blue helmet, NWO, you know, uh, agent at your door, or a crackhead breaking in the middle of the night, the things you need to do in this situation are gonna be roughly the same, and the things you need to do to train for them are gonna be roughly the same. And 
If you aren't ready for all this stuff, it doesn't matter how awake you are and how much you know about the real causes of any of this, is that you're going to just be churned underneath the uh, eventual problems just along with all the normies who have no idea what's going on versus someone who doesn't believe any of that thing, that stuff, thinks it's all chance and coincidence, but has been training, has been in shape, has been stockpiling food, they're going to fare much better even if it is the lizard people or the directed energy weapons or whatever. So you don't get to absolve yourself of being prepared or doing the steps to be prepared just because you are awake and you know what's really going on. It doesn't matter. The flames are gonna lick at the side of your house the same whether they were started by Jewish space lasers as if they were started by a lightning strike. And you're gonna have to leave your house just as quickly. You're gonna have to be just as ready to deal with smoke inhalation. You're gonna have to be just as able to run or sprint without falling over dead from a heart attack, regardless of the reason why you're running. And so don't let the focus become on what, you know, why all these things are happening. And like I said, I really don't want people to, don't pretend like I'm saying that you shouldn't try to figure it why figure out why anything is happening or try to get ahead of problems by potentially knowing but one of the main things is, is these models if you're honest with yourself about them they're not very predictive even if let's say the harp is what's causing earthquakes your understanding or your knowledge of that that this is done by harp not by tectonic plate movement or whatever that doesn't help you predict the earthquakes you know like if you think you're wrong Post in the comments when this stuff's going to happen next, and we'll see if you're right. Tell us where the next giant wildfire is going to be. Tell us where the next giant earthquake is going to be if you think that it's predictive. And if you've been able to do that a couple times, then you can say, yeah, this is a predictive model. But until it is, it's useless anyway. Your understanding of why this is happening isn't really helping you be more prepared anyway. So it can be fun or interesting to read about that stuff, but it's not putting an extra month of food in your stockpile. It's not helping you be more in shape. It's not helping you be more accurate with your rifle. It's not helping you deal any more with a job loss or an economic disruption or a supply chain disruption versus someone who is just thinks everything's this, the way it is on face value, tor total normie with the exception of their being prepared and actually taking those steps, they're going to come way out way ahead of the person who may be right about everything, but isn't actually doing the day-to-day on-the-ground stuff that you need to to actually deal with the consequences of what, what these people are doing, what the global leader are doing, you know what I mean? So that's why I think these fires are a perfect example because I'm looking at it and all the people are talking about how this was done on purpose and like my whole thought is what difference does it make when you're for the person in the house who had to flee the fire you know what difference does it make when i saw a video of them driving by completely flames massive flames everywhere starting to cover with smoke there's a woman lying on the side of the road and they weren't able or were too scared or whatever to get out and get her and she certainly died because of that she might have already been dead already and there's lots of conversations about what people should have done um what they could have done could they have saved her? Did they not save her because they were just normies, whatever? And in that situation, the only thing that would have changed it is these people's mindset, physical preparation, mental preparation ahead of time. And none of that matters why that smoke was there, why that fire was there. So let me know what you guys think. And uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I will talk to you later.